In this video, we'll examine the aerobic pathway of cellular respiration. This includes the transition reactions from pyruvate to the Krebs cycle and also Krebs cycle. The aerobic pathways of cellular respiration take place if oxygen is present. And this is the preferred pathway in multicellular organisms. In fact, it's um, the only pathway that will sustain life in multicellular organisms. In fact, it's the only pathway that will sustain life in multicellular organisms. You should recall that in glycolysis, one glucose molecule uh, is broken apart through the investment of some energy in the form of ATP. And the final result is that we get two pyruvate molecules. And along the way, four ATP are formed. There are also two NADH molecules that are formed. And while they weren't uh, relevant in terms of energy production in anaerobic pathways, Ways, they are important in terms of energy production in aerobic pathways. So we'll examine what happens to the NADH and uh, how it happens exactly in the next video. So let's take a look at what's actually happening after pyruvate is formed. You remember that there are two pyruvate molecules, so everything that happens to one molecule is also going to happen to the other molecule. And Remember that it's a three carbon molecule with a lot of bond energy still locked up in its bonds. So it is going to be moving from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria because the aerobic pathway takes place in the mitochondria. You've learned about the mitochondria as being the power plant of the cell. It's because that's where the ATP gets generated in bulk. Let's take a closer look at these transition reactions. Here's our pyruvate molecule with its three carbons and you can see that it's going to be forming a two carbon molecule called acetyl-CoA. There's actually quite a bit happening here. We're losing a carbon and that's why we're going from a three carbon molecule to a two carbon molecule. We end up with some carbon dioxide being generated and that would be this very same carbon dioxide that we exhale regularly every time we breathe out. You'll see that there's another free NAD from uh, within the cell cytosol uh, coming in and picking up some hydrogen and with it it picks up electrons and some energy. So we want to file this away in the back of our brains because it's not ATP yet but it's actually worth 3 ATP when it goes through the electron transport chain. Something else kind of interesting happens here is something called coenzyme A joins that molecule and you get as a result this acetyl-CoA. CoA is actually formed from the B vitamin thiamine. Okay, so CoA is actually only bonded to that molecule for a short period of time and it's there to enable the next step to take place. Okay, so you can see that the CoA is actually not going to be bonded to that molecule for very long because it's actually leaving the molecule as it's shown here. In the transition reactions, pyruvate is transported into the mitochondria by a carrier molecule embedded in the mitochondrial membrane. And this requires a multi-enzyme complex, which actually does all of the things we've just talked about. It removes CO2, uh, NAD accepts hydrogen and high energy electrons and NADH forms, and coenzyme A joins the acetyl group to make it active. Let's take a look at the next step. Here's our acetyl-CoA and it actually reacts with a molecule called oxaloacetate. And the important thing here to do is to just follow the carbons. Remember that acetyl-CoA has got two carbons. Oxaloacetate has got four carbons. And when you put a two carbon molecule together with a four carbon molecule, you get a six carbon molecule, citrate. Um, the Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle because citrate is actually citric acid and it's the first thing that forms in the cycle. So in this step, acetyl-CoA reacts with oxaloacetate to produce citrate. In the next step, citrase is isomerized to isocitrate. It's a very fancy word. All it means is that we still have the same number of carbons, but they just get rearranged and so do some of the other atoms. Okay, on to the next step. We still have our isocitrate, which is a six carbon molecule, and it's going to be converted to alpha ketoglutarate, which is a five carbon molecule. You should by now be able to see that that carbon came off as carbon dioxide. But something really important is happening here as well. We're getting more NADH. And if you remember, NADH is actually going to be used to create three ATP uh, later on in another series of reactions called the electron transport chain. So something else you can think about is which one of the molecules has more energy, isocitrate or ketoglutarate? Now if you think about this, isocitrate 
is losing carbon, but we're not concerned about that. What we are concerned about is that the NAD is coming and picking up hydrogen and electrons and energy. That should tell you that that energy is coming from isocitrate and that therefore alpha ketoglutarate will actually have less energy because the energy from isocitrate has gone to NADH. Next step, alpha ketoglutarate, our five carbon molecule, actually gets converted to a four carbon molecule and you can see how that happens. Again, we get carbon dioxide forming. Coenzyme A comes in again and it uh, joins briefly with uh, the carbon chain. But again, important for us, NADH is formed. We need to file that away again because that's going to be worth three more ATP in the electron transport chain. Okay, so now we have CoA bonded with a high energy bond. In the next step, the CoA is actually removed from this four carbon molecule and we end up with another four carbon molecule but a little bit more energy is removed from that succinyl CoA and we actually get some ATP forming. This is really important. It's our, our first actual ATP molecule from the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. In the next step, succinyl CoA, which is a four carbon molecule, gets converted to fumarate, but another molecule, FADH2, gets formed. Now, FADH2 is a little bit like NADH in that it'll go through the electron transport chain, but it's really only worth two ATP molecules, so it gets converted. It's like a toonie getting converted to the two loonies that it's worth. Next step, fumarate, four carbon molecule, gets converted to malate, some water gets added, and in the next step, uh, malate, the four carbon molecule, gets converted to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate should ring a bell because it's what we started the cycle with. It joined with acetyl-CoA to give us citrate. In this step, the important thing in terms of energy is that NADH forms. And the other important idea is that oxaloacetate is recycled. And this idea of cycling in these um, biochemical pathways or these chains of reactions is really important because if you can do what you want, that is form a bunch of NADH and some ATP and in so doing regenerate the starting molecules, it's actually a very, very conservative process. So the cycle then can begin again and there's our uh, acetyl-CoA and our oxaloacetate forming into citrate. So in summary, we can take a look at the transition reactions and Krebs cycle. Uh, each pyruvate molecule entering the mitochondria goes through the transition reactions and Krebs cycle and it results in two carbon dioxide molecules, four NADH, one FADH, and one ATP. From one glucose molecule, we have to multiply everything by two because there were two pyruvate molecules going through each one of these steps. We're going to get four carbon dioxide molecules which need to enter the blood in our bodies, be transported to our lungs and be exhaled. Or we produce four NADH from each pyruvate, so therefore a total of eight NADH. And we produce two FADH in total from both pyruvate molecules and two ATPs. We're going to take a look at what happens to NADH and FADH in order to produce the ATP. Uh, and then we're going to come back to glycolysis and summarize the whole thing in our next video.